All right, so I'm Dominique Pichard, and I'm a dermatologist. I'm at uh, the National Institutes of Health, and so I work with uh, the group, uh, with Dr. Wiedemann's group, as well as uh, Dr. Gross. So today I'm gonna talk about the cutaneous neurofibromas working group and what we have been working on. So as you heard earlier, we're a relatively new working group. Uh, it's been probably about a year uh, that, we've been, um, that we've been in production. Is that right? Okay. So I just want to tell you what, what we set out to do as the cutaneous neurofibroma working group. Ha! Huh, I didn't touch it. Okay, so the first thing was we wanted to identify research priorities for cutaneous neurofibromas in NF1. And so we've worked on that. The other big thing that we want to tackle, and this is multiple uh, activities, is we want to develop recommendations for clinical trials. And this includes clinical trial endpoints, clinical trial outcome measure tools, and clinical trial design. So first, I want to show some pictures of what cutaneous neurofibromas are, and this is part of why it is a challenge to study cutaneous neurofibromas. So as you can see on the screen, they can look quite different. So we can have cutaneous neurofibromas that stick out of the skin as these soft nodules, we can have some that are a little bit deeper in the skin and they might just feel like a dome shape on the skin. We have some that, it's hard to see on the screen, but they are little, almost blue, violaceous. If you feel it, it almost feels like it indents in. So are these, how do we measure these in a clinical trial and tell the response? And as patients, we want to know, do you recognize a difference? Is it important for you based on the type of cutaneous neurofibromas that you have? I also, because I'm a skin doctor, I look at the skin a lot, and I, I, I like pictures, but I wanted to show, there's a lot of things on the skin of the general population, which includes individuals with NF1, that are not related to NF1. And I get asked a lot, this red thing, this cherry angioma is not related to NF1. It's just a normal mole that comes sometime after you're 30. These brown ones here, seborrheic keratosis, or the adult scaly mole, it's a gift you got from one of your parents or grandparents, it's inherited, and they come in any time after your 30s. These are skin tags. They can look kind of like cutaneous neurofibromas. They're a little bit floppy, sometimes they're smaller. Sometimes they're like on a little tiny stalk. And this one here, this is a mole. So as moles mature, they can actually lose their pigment. So you may have a flat brown spot when you're younger, and then as it grows, it, it lifts up, and then it can lose its color. That can be confused for cutaneous neurofibroma. We don't expect to treat moles in a cutaneous neurofibroma trial, so it's important to recognize what's a cutaneous neurofibroma and what's something different. All right, so when we talk about an endpoint in the clinical trial, we want to, it's the primary outcome that's being measured in some sort of interventional trial. So in cutaneous neurofibromas, these interventions could be destruction, it could be a medication, so some sort of intervention that's being done. And what is it that we should be looking at? Should we look at the number of cutaneous neurofibromas, the number of new cutaneous neurofibromas, the size of the cutaneous neurofibromas, how soft the cutaneous neurofibromas are? Most importantly, what we need to know is what is meaningful change? So as Dr. Korf said this morning, 20% reduction in a plexiform neurofibroma may be significant, but 20% change in one of these skin neurofibromas, is that meaningful to a patient with, with uh, NF1? And that's the input that we want. So as Dr. Korf said, the current tools that we use to measure neurofibromas are these two, this paper frame, as well as the calipers. So the paper frame, you put it on three different areas of the body and you count the number of neurofibromas that are within that area. All right, so it's a, it's a general measurement of the number of neurofibromas that someone has, and when we look in the clinical trial, we'll only count the ones that are within this paper frame. So we're not doing whole body counts. So we're looking at three areas. And then the calipers are used to measure the size. So these are two ways that we're looking at these endpoints, the number and the size. But there's challenges associated with these tools.
tools. These are not the perfect tools, and so we want to find better tools. What are some of the challenges? Well, we heard this morning from Dr. Korf, they have a very slow growth, so their natural history is that it's going to take time. And the next slide is actually a slide that Dr. Korf showed this morning. So this is growth over years. So if we're going to do a study that's going to look to see if it slows growth, we're going to be in the study for a long time. Small changes in size measurement. So with the caliper, maybe we can't measure very small changes, which might actually tell us if a drug is biologically active in these cutaneous neurofibromas. Maybe it was that we didn't have enough of a dose. But we would like to be able to measure small changes, even if those small changes don't end up making the trial meet its endpoint. It's important for us to know biologically if there's any change. Only measures above the surface. So what about the part of the tumor that's underneath the skin? It would be good to know. Maybe that shrinks sooner. Maybe it actually doesn't change at all, even when the surface does change. Full body counts, as Dr. Korf said, those are very challenging. If you wanted to count the number of tumors on a full body, it's not consistent uh, across visits or even across people counting. Which tumor should be measured? I showed you the different presentations of the tumors. Should we be measuring certain types of the tumors or certain presentations of the tumors? And the tool that we use to measure it should be available. So if it's such a specialized tool that only one place has it, then it's not something that can be done in a multi-center study or across multiple places. So these are some of the challenges that we've had. So one of the important things for us to know, like I'd said, what is a meaningful change? And so in order to understand the patient perspective, the patient or patient representative's perspective, uh, in the cutaneous neurofibroma working group, we've developed a survey. And we, this, in this working group, we have three patient representatives, um, and they have been very involved in developing this survey. So what did this survey do? It's two main things. We want to know how do patients view their cutaneous neurofibromas? So does the location of the cutaneous neurofibroma matter? Is it the size that matters? Is it the symptoms associated with the neurofibromas? the itching, the breakdown of the skin? Is it the number of neurofibromas that matter? Also, we want to know what patients would think about treatment options. So is the result, if you're left with a scar, but the neurofibroma's gone, is that acceptable? Would that be a change that would be important to you? The treatment type. Would it be okay taking a medicine every day or twice a day, and for how long? as opposed to doing a surgery or some destructive method to the actual tumor. And then, of course, the side effects. What types of side effects would one tolerate uh, for treatment of the cutaneous neurofibromas? So these surveys, as I've said, uh, has been developed. Uh, so we had a, a group within our working group, which included our patient representatives. And this is a survey that will be distributed through the CTF registry. Um, so please look out for that. Hopefully we'll have that out this summer. Uh, but this really was a lot of hard work. We did benefit from having the patient representatives on our group give input. And then also Dr. Cannon reached out to a larger group of patient representatives to vet these questions, look at this, the study, make sure that we're asking the questions and getting back the answers that we think we're getting back. Phase two will be to do a second survey that'll be paired adolescents and the caretakers um, to see, to ask similar questions. So hopefully that'll be out in the fall or winter. So briefly, I want to just show you some of the proposed measurement tools. So we have a camera that can look at, it creates a 3D volume of the neurofibroma. Um, so that would be good for looking at the size that's above the skin. This is a picture of a high-frequency ultrasound. So when you do an ultrasound, you can see what's underneath the skin. And then MRI. So these are just three proposed tools. They work through all three possible. Sure, that's a great question. Repeat the question, please, for the action. Yeah, so the question was, what is the relative cost of these tools? So this camera is about a ten to $15,000 piece of equipment. So not something that it, people would buy to have at their house, but when you're talking about doing a research study, it's a reasonable cost. The ultrasound is on the order of $25,000. Again, 
within a reasonable realm for a research institution to invest in. MRI, most institutions have an MRI. They may need to change the sequence to be able to look closely at the skin, but that's a tool that hospitals would have. So this is just an image of a cutaneous neurofibroma and what you can see on an ultrasound. Top of the skin here, this dark spot, is your cutaneous neurofibroma. And then this is as you're going deeper into the body. Okay, so this is all skin. So there you're seeing a dark spot within the skin. And with this, you can measure the size of the tumor and you could remeasure it at a follow-up visit. This is uh, the camera that I showed you and looking at a cutaneous neurofibroma on the foot, and it creates a 3D visualization. This is another example of a tumor that was on the arm, and just to show what it can do. So using the software, you can create this topographic map of the tumor that then will give you a volume. So again, this is only on top of the skin. It's not at answering the question about what's going on below the skin. So that's, a, that's a, a great point to bring up. And it does not, would not necessarily take into account the swelling of the skin. What this does do, so a person has to circle. So this was my circling of the neurofibroma. And then what I did, well, I didn't include it in this picture, in this presentation. But then you circle an area around it to say this is going to be my background. So that may take into account some of that swelling of the area, but not the neurofibroma itself. It's a good point, and thank you for bringing it up. I'm sorry, the question was, uh, does this take into account any swelling uh, that occurs? Because uh, you're saying that it can change day by day. So the tumors can appear to grow in a very hot space uh, on, on the skin. We'll have to temperature control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, great, uh, that's a great point. All right, and then finally, I just want to um, briefly mention, Dr. Cork did mention it um, this morning, I believe, but the selimetinib study for cutaneous neurofibromas, um, so University of Alabama has already started enrolling patients, uh, and at NIH, we will start enrollment soon. Um, but just a general timeline, um, so at the first visit, what we're doing is we're measuring the cutaneous neurofibromas. So we're using those two tools that I talked about, the paper frame and the caliper. We are sampling or biopsying one of the cutaneous neurofibromas. Patients are doing surveys as well as blood draws. And then you can see by the fifth month, so at one of the visits by the fifth month, we're going to sample another cutaneous neurofibroma and do more blood draws. And then after that, every month, Patients will have measurements of their cutaneous neurofibromas as well as these patient surveys. And at the end, we will do measurements, another sample, and patient surveys. So this is for adults uh, with cutaneous neurofibromas. And I just want to finish with acknowledgments. Um, so it has really been such a pleasure to have our three patient representatives be part of this working group. I feel like we were very lucky that as a group, we started around the same time that the patient representatives started. Um, so they've been an integral part of our group. Uh, and I do want to encourage those um, who are affected by cutaneous neurofibromas and want to make a difference and want to have your voice heard to please look out for this patient survey that will be coming out. It will be really critical for us to know what's meaningful for you. And this is your chance to have that engagement uh, in the cutaneous neurofibroma research. I also want to thank Pam Walters, who's been really critical in helping us in developing this survey and working with our group. So thank you, Pam. And to the Children's Tumor Foundation, not only for the opportunity to be here today, but also for helping us with distribution of the survey. Thank you.